hello everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're enjoying the content that i'm putting out so far if you are i would really love for you to subscribe so you can see more of it and if you would like the videos that you enjoy and that you found useful to you then that would really help me because then i can know which ones you want to see more of what kinds of videos whether that be cooking whether it be um, shopping grocery hauls whether that be homeschooling stuff or one like I'm about to do right now if you would like those videos that you like then that will help me know uh, what sort of content you would like to see more of if that makes any sense so before we begin I am going to put out a little disclaimer this video is about ways that my family and I save money with inflation like it is prices are going up all across the board all across the nation over everything whether it's food prices gas prices um, appliances vehicles everything is higher now so i've seen a lot of youtube videos lately come across my feed that are like this like tips to save money on groceries or how to save money on gas or how to save money overall or how my family budgets and things like that so I get the impression based on my feed that a lot of people are like me and they just wanna save a little money here and there, wherever you can, just to make ends meet. Especially if gas prices are gonna to continue to soar, we need all the help that we can get. So disclaimer, before we start, these are just tips and tricks that me and my family use to save money on our budget. I am in no way, shape, or form judging you if you don't do these things, or if you choose not to do these things, or if these things um, don't apply to you. These are just what we do. I have seen videos where people have said what they do, and I think to myself, oh no, that's not going to work for us. So I don't do them. So if these don't work for you, no judgment here. You do what is appropriate for you and your family. I'm just letting you know this is some of the things that we do in case of some of these things you might not have thought of and you can take a tip and use it in your family and it helps you, then that's wonderful and I'm glad that I could help you. That's all this video is. So please don't hate me in the comments. I sat down and I made a list of all these ways that I try to save us money and it got to be a little overwhelming because it was a lot. And I got to 40 ways and then I thought this is gonna be way too long of a video and I still wasn't even done thinking of the different ways so we're gonna break this up and if you like this video please like it so that I will know that you want to see part two part three and we can make it a series so I just grabbed the first like 20 ways and we'll just do 20 for today this is not all the ways that I try to save us money this is just 20 but maybe it will help you and I'm going to group them in categories. All right, so we've got the first category is pets. Now I say pets, but the only pet we have is a dog. We do not have a cat. My kids are allergic. My mom is allergic. My sister is allergic. And while my mom and sister don't live with us, they do visit. Um, and my kids do live here. So we cannot have a cat. Um, so we only have a dog. And that's what I'm going to base these tips off of is what we do to save money for our dog. Um, we also don't have reptiles. I don't think you want me to give you a tip on how to save money on snakes. Spoiler alert, you will be offended. If you like snakes, that's you, but keep them at your house and please don't show me any pictures. Okay, pets. Tip number one is treats. We don't buy the big store, like expensive, like um, bags of treats, like the training rewards and, and all those kinds of things. We just do simple everyday treats. We'll either um, give her just pieces of her dog food or ice cubes. She loves ice cubes. And especially since she is still a baby, she'll be six months old in just a few days at the time of me recording this. So she's six months old. So she is in the process of losing all of her puppy teeth and cutting all of her adult teeth. And so her gums are swollen and the ice, she really likes it. That's cheap. We also buy a store brand peanut butter. And as you can see, we write her name all over it so that we cannot confuse it with our peanut butter. I do not want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich made with dog drool. 
Um, you just have to be very, very careful and look at the ingredients to make sure that the peanut butter does not contain xylitol. Xylitol is poisonous to dogs. It will kill them. And some peanut butter does have it in there. I have found the Kroger brand does not have it. It is perfectly safe for her and it is the most cost effective option. So we open the peanut butter and we stuff it down in those in her Kong. I'm sure you've seen those Kong toys and with a few little pieces of her dog food in there or an ice cube in there with the peanut butter and she goes nuts. So she also will get blueberries every now and again. If I have a few, I'll give her a few blueberries. She likes that. Um, as number tip number two is to save money on pets toys. We do not buy a whole bunch of dog toys. Uh, we bought a few when we first got her as a puppy. The kids were excited and they each wanted to pick her out a toy and things like that. And that's fine. And as she has ripped the stuffed animals, we've tossed them and gotten a new one. But we try not to buy a whole lot of that. We buy regular tennis balls, like a can of tennis balls in the sporting goods section, rather than tennis balls in the pet section. That's cheaper and it's a it's a tennis ball and then she has three so if she loses one under the couch she has extra um, we also buy her nyla bones instead of rawhide bones because the rawhide she can consume those and as she bites them down and gets little pieces off we have to throw those in the trash so she doesn't swallow them the nyla bones she cannot tear off pieces and they last for a really really long time and we were going through the rawhide bones i was buying a pack that was like two this size and one pack and she was going through those in like three days and those were like eleven dollars for a pack or i could spend that same eleven dollars on a nyla bone and it lasts for months and months and months and months and months and another thing she really likes it's super cheap are bubbles just like a little kid we put um bubbles outside all summer long the kids have bubbles to play with sidewalk chalk etc so she can go out there and if we blow bubbles she loves to try to jump and catch them and she cannot figure out why her whiskers pop the bubbles before she can get the bubble so it's like a game of chase for her and she really likes those all right number three and probably the biggest tip that i have money saving for pets is grooming we bathe her here at home now mind you she is a great dame and I did tell you she is a baby, she is a puppy, but we bathe her here at home. She um, gets a bath here instead of going to the pet store or the vet or a groomer to get a bath. I checked Petco, it's either Petco or PetSmart, I can't remember, but you can look it up. And their bath, just a bath, not, it's a bath or it's a grooming, which the grooming includes the nail trim, the gland expression, all of those, you know, the brushing and all that kind of stuff. Just bathing her was $38, I think. And of course, that's the large breed, but the small breed or the extra small breed, like we're talking Chihuahua size, those were $26 just for a bath, not nail trim or anything like that. So we do that here at home and save that money. And then we save also on her shampoo because we do not buy dog shampoo. We use this plain old Johnson's baby head to toe shampoo. It's tear free, so it cannot burn her eyes. It doesn't irritate her skin. And she does not smell like a wet dog, just like the dog shampoo smells like a wet dog. She does not smell like that. So that was, and then you can always get a coupon. You can always find coupons to get like a dollar off of baby shampoo, always. So it's really inexpensive. It's already less expensive than um, the dog shampoos. All right, so the next category is we reuse things. Now, what do you mean by reuse things? Tip number four, reuse decor items in your home. Like um, if I'm hosting a bridal shower, baby shower, we host Christmas for my whole family here at my house. Sometimes Jason's family have Christmas here at my house. All kinds of things um, that we will host. So I save the decor items like birthday banners and we pull them out every birthday. If it's one of my kids' birthdays or Jason's birthday, I pull them out and hang them up and put them back until the next person's birthday. Um, vases, all kinds of things, serving platters. My mom has given me several little cut glass crystal um, or even not cut glass, cut glass, just plain. Um, I will use those here. You see I'm reusing them as candy dishes, things on my desk. And then when I need to pull them out to use them for a dip, 
or something like that when I'm hosting. I just take them downstairs, wash them, and use them. And then reuse those. Some candles, reuse them. Um, and then number five, the way to reuse things and save money is on calendars. We use dry erase calendars. I do use a paper planner for myself because I can carry it like to church if I have you know, events and stuff for youth group and all that stuff. I need to write them down in my planner. I do that and I keep it on my desk and that's kind of my way to keep up with everything is in my planner. But as far as everybody is concerned, we have this dry erase right here, right there, that dry erase calendar for the school room. And I keep everything on there for the kids to look at all through the school year, every month. And then we have one downstairs. You probably saw my, um, or you may not have, yeah, well, you may, I don't know when, if, when this video will come out, but I recently got a new dry erase calendar for the kitchen. We already had one, but it had seen better days. I replaced it. I just dry erase every month instead of buying paper calendars all the time. Um, number six, household items like dusters. I got this dusting thing from Dollar Tree. So I paid, and this was before it was a dollar twenty-five. So this was a dollar, and this was a dollar. So for two dollars, I have this little duster thing, and it replaces my Swiffer that is super expensive. Those Swiffer dusters, you just pull this off and throw it in the washing machine throw it in the dryer and reuse it again also from dollar tree that same day i paid a dollar for this handle and a dollar for this thing right here and then a dollar for this thing so this was three dollars and it was like the wet swiffer pads so this velcros off and you can throw this in the washing machine as well so if i have a wet spill or like a puppy accident or somebody spilled a sticky drink i can just kind of quickly you get some like squirt floor cleaner and like clean that up really quick spot clean and it, it velcros off and this like fluffy one will can velcro on for like dust mopping in between um and then you saw my mopping hack video if you didn't go look at it there is that spin mop that the head also comes off and you can rewash it so i put all of those in the mop head in the same load run a quick load and those are ready to go again instead of buying the expensive swiffers um, number seven, we use my dishes. I do not buy paper plates and solo cups and plastic forks and knives and things like that. I will, I'm not saying I never, I will if we have a huge gathering, if like my whole family is going to be here for Christmas and there's 30, 40 of us, then I will go get the big pretty Christmas paper plates and the red solo cups and we do that way. Or what have you. If it's something like that, I will. If it's just us on a day-to-day, week-in, week-out, we use my dishes and wash them. That saves a lot of money. Number eight way I reuse things is gift bags. We have, like I said, a huge family. My mom is the oldest of four. His mom is the oldest of four. So there's lots of birthdays and get-togethers and showers. And if somebody, if we always say birthday bags or just generic bags, this could be used for a lady's birthday. It could be used for Mother's Day. It could be used for a wedding. And I put them in the closet. And then when I buy tissue paper to wrap something, if I have a couple of pieces left, excuse Colson's feet over here, sorry. Um, if I have just two or three pieces left, then I just fold it up and I put it with the gift bags. And then also any like jars from the kitchen, spaghetti sauce, pickles, those sort of jars, um, I will wash them instead of throwing them out and reuse them. I can always reuse them in the schoolroom with crayons or manipulatives, you know, marbles, all kinds of things, or I can reuse them for spices or whatever I need them in the kitchen. Okay, the next category is shop in advance. Um, number 10, I do not wait until the very last minute, if I can help it. Now, sometimes I'm not aware until the very last minute, but if I know something is coming. I do not wait until the last minute to shop for a gift. Like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, those are the same days every single year. You, those do not sneak up on you at the last minute. Um, shop in advance. If you know when your kids' birthdays are. You know when your spouse's birthday is. You know when your wedding anniversary is, and so on and so forth. Shop in advance. And I know you're probably thinking, if you're a mom, but my kids may not be into that toy when that time comes or i'm not going to know what size clothes they wear when that time comes so i have to wait no you don't um just put money aside for it or put money on a gift card 
and then just wait. And then when it gets closer to time, you can get it. This way, if you know you're going to get a Mother's Day gift for your mom, okay, and you know, let's just use my mom for example, she's into chickens. She loves chicken. And if I see in November, if I see a really pretty chicken or a pretty dish towel with a chicken on it that I think she would love it, then I think to myself, hmm, she's still going to be into chickens come Mother's Day and she would really like this dish towel and I don't know if this dish towel will still be sitting here come Mother, come May. So I'm going to go ahead and get it now. So you get it and you put it aside in a closet somewhere and then when Mother's Day comes, you've already bought her present. This also allows for you to check for sales. When something goes on sale, if you see something, then wait, watch for it to go on sale and then get it. Instead of waiting till the very last minute, you have to get the gift and it's not on sale and you don't have time for it to wait to go on sale. You've got to get it now and now you've spent extra money. Then also tip number 11 kind of goes along with that. Um, you can purchase gift cards in advance. This is what I do. I did this one, one year for Christmas. It was my goal. Every time I went to Kroger, I purchased a gift card of some sort, whether it was to Target, whether it was just a Visa gift card, whether it was a Home Depot, an Amazon, whatever it was. I just purchased something of at least $25. And then I just saved them up in an envelope all year long. And I didn't tell Jason that I was doing this. And then he came November and he sat down and he said, okay, we need to discuss Christmas and who all we have to buy for and how much do we want to budget for each person. And I said, wait one second. And he just kind of looked and I ran and I got my envelope. I said, here you go. I said, Christmas is already paid for. And he was, what? And I explained to him what I did and you should have seen the relief on his face because normally we sit down in November and he has to figure out where, how are we going to pay for Christmas? Like I said, we have huge families plus our kids. Um, and it's just, it's stressful. And so that was a huge, huge blessing because we could either take those gift cards and go shop with them. We could take the car target gift card and go to target and buy this toy at target that I know that my nephew really wanted and use the gift card to pay for it. Or I can just take those gift cards and give those as gifts themselves. It was a huge, huge help. Especially if you get them at Kroger when they offer them for like four times the fuel points, grab them then and get fuel points also. Little insider tip. Okay, then the next category here is home decor. Um, tip number 12 is home goods, TJ Maxx and Marshalls. They usually have really good prices. And if you check their clearance, they just sometimes have a really good markdown clearance. Tip number 13 is Hobby Lobby. Now, I'm really sad they did away with that 40% off on their app, but if you watch, they typically will run the sales on whatever the different sections of the store, like the spring collection or like paper, paper crafts or whatever it is, it'll be 50% off this week. Next week, it won't be on sale. The week after that, it'll be 50% off or 40% off or whatever it is. The week after that, it's not on sale. And they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Watch it. So if you see something at Hobby Lobby and you really like it or you really want it for someone for a gift later or for yourself or for your home or whatever, wait for it to go on sale and then go get it. Um, also, they have a really good clearance. Like, for example, I bought this because I was hosting a bridal shower and I needed to make a banner saying like bride to be but I couldn't find any that we liked, that were pretty, that matched our theme. And I was at Hobby Lobby, just happened to be checking the clearance and saw this. Well, this didn't match the theme, but the back side is white. So I just turned it around this way and did how it made it custom this way. It was originally $5.99. I got it for $1.49. So check their clearance, it's awesome. Tip number 14 is Walmart. Usually they have lower prices just every day. Some, I don't typically see home decor stuff go on sale, but you, if you'll price match them, um, like picture frames, that kind of thing, candles versus other stores, you might find a deal and always check their clearance aisle. Tip number 15 is Dollar Tree. They usually have a great selection of home decor for like, um, picture frames, candles. We recently did a 50th wedding anniversary for Jason's mom and dad six months ago and we 
found candles. We This was Dollar Tree. We found a whole bunch of these. Now, I looked on Etsy for these because I saw a picture with on Pinterest that had a table layout that had these candles on it. I thought that was very elegant. His sister really loved it, the idea, the look of it. But on Etsy, four of these was $25. Mm -mm, dollar tree and this was before they were dollar 25 so i paid a dollar for each one of these and they we barely burned them see but that's awesome save it and reuse it when you have an ice storm you're gonna be really glad you have it um they also have really good seasonal decor like for example i just got this pack of three little mini flags to stick in our flower bed when it's fourth of july or well, memorial day and then again fourth of july and then again at labor day i grabbed two packs of these um, and then I had a door hanger that was a big flag that was about like this and about, it was about 18 inches, I think, and it's hanging on my front door. So they have a lot of, um, good stuff. And then there's a new store, tip number 16, there's five below, which if you have a five below, it's awesome. Some of it is junk, but some of it is worth it. Um, and then there's a new store here that I have not been to, but they say, excuse my hair. I don't really know what's wrong with my hair today. Um, there's a new store here that just opened and I haven't been yet, but everybody is saying that it's like Five Below, but it's home decor stuff. So I'm excited about that. It's called Pop Shelf and I might do a video where I take you guys through this store. All right. Now the next category is one tip all by itself and it, it kind of goes along with that and it is shop the clearance. Um, anytime you are in any store for any reason, shop the clearance aisle or clearance rack or shelf or wherever it is. My kids already know we are not leaving whatever the store is until we go down the clearance aisle. Um, I've already taught them. They already know, especially at Hobby Lobby. Um, just recently, they put all their Easter stuff on the clearance. Now, this one I got last year and he's got a little mark on him, but it's okay. But he was originally $2.99 and I paid $0.29. Cents. They put it all down like 90% off. And then this is also one that I got last year because I love them. I have the whole farmhouse look through my house. Little East, the egg plate with the cute little farmhouse. Um, it was $6.99 full price. So I paid $0.69 cents for that. And I got a couple of those. I think they're perfect size for like a spoon rest. Like when you're cooking on your stove. So those are cute. And then this year when it was we were putting out their spring stuff. I saw these eggs. Aren't they cute? Did you see these at Hobby Lobby this year? Um, and they're not Ray Dunn, but they're very similar font. It's that look that I really like. And I told the kids, these are adorable. And they said, well, get one, Mom. They're 40% off. And I said, no, nope, mm -mm, they're $3.99. But I waited. And they put them all on clearance, 90% off. So I paid $0.39 cents for those. So I would much rather pay $0.39 cents than $3.99 or even 40% off. Always check the clearance. Now, number um, the next category, next three categories relate with food. We have to eat. I'm sorry. And you have to eat too. Here's our deal. All right. So tip number eight or the next category is meal plan. Okay. Meal planning is going to be huge help because it's going to keep you from um, buying impulsively at the store. So tip number 18 is make a plan for your meals. Now I only meal plan dinners. I don't meal plan breakfast and lunch. That is always like fly by the seat of your pants. My kids don't eat very much variety of those, uh, either one of those. Colson always eats oatmeal for breakfast. Bailey always eats cereal unless I've made cinnamon rolls, which is rare or muffins or something like that, which is kind of rare, but mostly they just eat, get up and eat cereal or oatmeal. Um, lunch is just a fight but yeah so i only meal plan dinners and i have my meal planning kit or not kit but meal planner and i have a video on how i use this i'll link it down below in the description remember um the next category next three categories relate with food foodie um we have to eat i'm sorry and you have to eat too here's our deal all right so tip number eight or the next category is meal plan okay Meal planning is going to be huge help because it's going to keep you from um, buying impulsively at the store. So tip number 18 is make a plan for your meals. Now, I only meal plan dinners. I don't meal plan breakfast and lunch. That is always like fly by the seat of your pants. 
my kids don't eat very much variety of those uh, either one of those colson always eats oatmeal for breakfast bailey always eats cereal unless i've made cinnamon rolls which is rare or muffins or something like that which is kind of rare but mostly they just eat get up and eat cereal or oatmeal um lunch is just a fight but yeah so i only meal plan dinners and i have my meal planning kit or not kit but meal planner and i have a video on how i use this i'll link it down below in the description if you'd like to see more in depth detail i use the monthly spread and i write down each day what we had for dinner so that i can kind of have an idea how often do we go out to eat or how often when did we eat spaghetti last etc and then eat on the weeks i plan out what are we going to eat for that week what are we going to eat for the next week when are we going to eat leftovers and then i take that information make a, a list a grocery list all right the next category is you don't buy convenience foods when you go to the store after you've made that list don't buy the convenience foods i cook from scratch as much as i can so don't buy things when i say convenient foods like things that has already been prepped for you for the most part to keep you from having to do <sighs> my hair has a mind of its own today um as much work to kind of save you time like the hamburger helper kits or the pre-made like home chef is that what they're called like they're in the deli section and it's like the meat and the veggies and all you have to do is like slide it in the oven it's not frozen but it's already basically ready for you to go the meal kits or the pre-cut veggies over there like the pre-cut up um bell peppers or the pre-skewered kebabs that have the meat and the veggies already on them or the pre-patted out hamburger patties or the pre-cut fruits like the little bowl of watermelon for five dollars when you could buy a whole watermelon for three dollars those sorts of things um also when i I don't buy like Lunchables. My kids won't eat the ham. They won't eat the turkey. Bailey will eat the pepperoni. So we kind of do a make your own Lunchables where she'll have like pepperoni and I'll cut up some cheese and she can have like peanuts and yogurt and whatever. She'll eat something like that for lunch. And then um, I will do things like that when we pack up our lunch. If we're going out running all our errands all day or if we're going on a road trip instead of fast food, we'll do like that. So instead of buying convenient fast food at 10 or 11 or $12 for each one of us, by the time you get a burger, fries, and a drink, then you're at 10 or $11 um, times four of us, it's like 50 bucks to go to McDonald's. So why buy McDonald's when you can just pack your own lunch? And then the last one we have for today um, is price match stores for the best deals that's tip number 20 so before you go shopping after you've made your meal plan and you've made your list of ingredients that you need to buy price match them like this make your list of the items you're gonna i do s for sam's w for walmart and k for kroger and i get on my apps and i say how much is apple jelly at kroger it's this much money how much is it at walmart it's this much money how much is it at sam's oh they don't have it so I need to figure out between Walmart and Sam's who has it the most. It was Kroger or Walmart. So circle that and then do that with every single item and then make a list. Okay, at Kroger, Kroger's list is, you've seen my shopping. Kroger, we're getting this and this and this and this. Walmart, we're getting this, 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 this. Sam's, we're going to get this, 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 and so on and so forth so that you're getting the best deal. And then in that, while you're price matching, look at the sale for that week. What does Kroger have on sale that you can put with your meal plan or look at your sale while you're making your meal plan and then say, do I have a coupon that can add to that and go from there? That has really saved a lot. Um, and so this last time that I went grocery shopping between those three stores, I saved a total of $237.17 just by doing that price matching and seeing who has the best deal. So those are my tips for today. I hope those help you. I hope you find at least one or two that you might could uh, find helpful for you and your family. And if you have any tips for how to save money, please let me know. Put it in the comments down below so that we can all learn and all help each other out. That's what I want this channel to be, a community 
where we can all help each other and save money, encourage each other, and so on. And if you like this video, hit the like button so that I will know. And if so, then we will do a part two later on. And if we have enough, then we'll do a part three. Um, and if you want to see more of my videos, I hope you subscribe to my channel and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Bye.